This episode of Video Marketing Madness is made possible by AWeber. AWeber is the easy way to do email marketing. And if you're not doing email marketing, well, shame on you because you certainly should be. And you should be doing it with AWeber. AWeber allows you to do newsletters, allows you to collect leads, and all that other email goodness. Check it out and see what we have to offer with AWeber by heading over to raythevideoguide.com slash AWeber. And on today's show, we're going to talk about five tools that are going to help you to grow your business. Should be fun. Yeah. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at, even if he's a little fat. He's filled with video expertise, has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. It's the radio show about video, Video Marketing Madness with Ray the Video Guy. I'm Steve Sleeper. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash video marketing madness. Get plenty of useful tips and news of the week. Go to video marketing madness radio.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and get all kinds of freebies from Ray. Yes. Yeah. Freebies. Did you, did you catch that news of the week sneaking in there? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't hear it. Yeah, well, you know, I <clears throat> as we talked about before the show, I'm, I, I was being a cheapskate and not wanting to buy that uh, that goofy soundboard software and said, uh, iTunes can do it, and it can, except that I forgot that after it plays one thing, it's going to just go down the list and start playing the next, so it uh, immediately started playing the News of the Week bumper, but oh, that's okay. No, I didn't hear it. We don't so. mind if people see our terrible mistakes on here. Well... Show- we are human. And, and of course, you know, about a month ago, we changed the format of the show. We've get, gotten away from interviews, although that doesn't mean we won't interview a top YouTube marketer if they come along. But we, we've sort of gotten away from the interviews, and uh, we've, we've uh, gotten into how-tos, important stuff that you need to know. And we're also trying to improve the audio quality of the show as well. So uh, we're recording the show, then posting it. So Ray is trying all kinds of different software to do that. <laughs> yes, well, you know, it's sad because, as I said, I've, I've gone in and, and started to study under a master of podcasting, and, uh, you know, I don't have all that fancy equipment yet that they have, so it, uh, we have to kind of jimmy stuff together here, and that's the, the result once in a while. Yeah, so. well, we're, we're figuring it out. It's fun. It's a fun hobby, but Ray wants to turn it into more than a hobby. He is the world's that's oldest right. intern. I am the world's oldest intern. I, I don't know if that's true, by the way, but uh, I like to say it. It sounds good. It sounds funny. And now you're doing an internship at a podcasting network, correct? That is correct. A sports network, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what's the name of it again? The uh, Sure Dog Radio yeah. Network. Yeah, I've heard of it before. I just can't remember it because I'm old. Well, there you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> Can't remember any and, of and I shouldn't say, you know, it, it's actually uh, w- with the with the SureDog Radio Network. That's only a small portion of it. They uh, they also produce a lot of podcasts that go on to other networks, uh, Podcast One and Fox Sports and and things like that. So there's a there's a few different places that these things go to. I've heard of I've heard of Podcast One and Fox. So that's, uh, that's I, cool. I believe most people have heard of Fox. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So now I can say that I've well, I I, I was going to say I can say that I've worked for both CBS and Fox, but uh, I actually did work for Fox Television at one point, so I guess that uh, was already the case. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I do have a little bit of YouTube news, a little bit of online video news, if you want to hit that bumper. Let's do it. Okay, here it is. News of the week. A new Google service, YouTube Newswire. Have you heard of this? You know what? I have been so out of the mix for the last week or so. I don't. I, I think YouTube could have relaunched, and I probably would not have noticed this week. Yeah, no, I hear you. I know how that goes. I, I spent the entire morning with customer support on, on a couple pieces of software that I use. So I, I you know, I, I know what it's like to be out of the loop, just not like you. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> No one is quite like me. No one is quite like YouTube Newswire will 
curate eyewitness news clips in real time. Ah, so this is, sounds like a uh, almost a, a CNN eye report sort of deal going on here. Yeah, yeah. YouTube Newswire will feature both global and regional feeds that focus on the most relevant events worldwide. So the earthquake in Nepal, the protest in Ferguson, the Arab Spring. Which I don't, inter- I don't mean to interrupt, Steve, but uh, those already happened. It, well, they're using those as examples. And see, they indirectly inspired the feature. That's why they brought that I up. See. You know. Gotcha. <laughs> and I'm used, I'm used to you joke interrupting. About some of those news things. I know, you? I know. But I'm used to you interrupting. So. Yes, yeah, so that's what I do best. The service launched, says yesterday, this is from Search Engine Watch, and when did I print this? 624. Oh, okay. So it launched uh, Tuesday. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's in partnership with Storyful, a social news agency Google has worked with since the protest in Egypt four years ago. Nice. Yeah. So uh, fun stuff. Yeah, that's it's kind of interesting and uh, certainly something to uh, to keep our eye on and uh, something we could have some fun with at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I look forward to that. I look forward to making, uh, you know, fake Godzilla movies and uh, sending them over to that. Oh, Godzilla. <laughs> I've got a little app on my phone, Steve, and it makes, like, UFOs fly in the sky and shoot lasers down and it looks, you know, I, I'd love to say real, but uh, we'll say real for lack of a better word. Yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, maybe we'll start submitting that to the news and say, oh, my gosh, look what happened. Godzilla. <laughs> Okay, now Bing Video Search gets a streamlined makeover, and this was uh, big news. Well, yeah, that, that's definitely big news because they really kind of needed it, and I don't know if it's any better uh, since I don't think I've been to Bing in, in at least a year. But, um, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, they, uh, they ripped off, I mean, took a cue from YouTube. Um, and more recently, they ripped off Facebook. I mean, took a cue from Facebook. <laughs> so they're including upload date, channel, number of views for each video. Thumbnails are going to be bigger, along with enlarged heroes or thumbnails based on search query. Okay, we know what that is. All right. Users can play the video from the hero or click through to the original source. Related searches will appear along with original search terms and suggested content appears at the bottom of the page. Boy, that's, you know, that is a, actually a really good idea and, and probably something that, uh, can you imagine if, uh, if Google search started to do that? You had a video ranked on page one of Google and they could just watch the video right there on Google before they click anything? That'd be cool. That would be quite interesting, I think. Yeah, that would be very cool. The other thing I'm waiting for is to be able to buy first page videos with Google. Yeah, that would be very, very nice. You know, that would uh, that would be very cool. I could really monetize that. I, I, I don't play around with AdWords, you know, traditional Google advertising very often, but it would be interesting to find out if you can go through your regular ad channels, like if you were going to, you know, let's say you were going to advertise on Google for your website, could you pay regular AdWords and have the the link you want to go to a, a YouTube page? That would be kind of interesting. I've never even thought of trying that. Oh, yeah. You know, I never thought of that either. I wonder if that would work. That's a great question. Mark. Well, you know, the, of course, the question would be, would they approve it? You know, uh, well, they already they already do. I can't imagine that they would uh, disapprove uh, their own page, but they, you know, obviously YouTube pages are easily approved. Yeah. Well, you know, so, you could have a YouTube page with a trailer, and that's it. Yeah. You know, and to, uh, to, to test out. Where's Tommy? Where's Tommy? We need Tommy. Yeah, we need Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Who I believe was our last interview, wasn't he? One of the last. And that would be somebody we would interview again. You know, we. we oh, absolutely. oh, by the way, the show is two years old. We celebrated it a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot to tell you. Wow. See, I had no idea. And a lot of the people that we interviewed, no offense, because you, if you're listening now and we interviewed you, you were not boring. 
But a lot of the uh, a lot of the people we interviewed, it just. But not Tommy. Yeah, and well, and that seemed to be the case in in a lot of them. Is uh, when we were interviewing people that were talking about a subject, it, it usually tended to be great. Um, but when we started to get into too many, you know, this is Mike Jones who runs an, an ad agency in, in, you know, Sheboygan, New Jersey. Um, that seemed to be where he ran into trouble. Yeah. Hit me in the head with a hammer. Right. When it was a guy who, you know, makes software and, and is on here and passionate about a certain subject, that was fantastic. Yeah. So, and, and those are the people that are listening right now anyway, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Five tools to help your business. Five tools to help your business. We need the old thing. Isn't it? And now for something completely different. Oh, I can send that to you, too. I'll get that to you. That's it. Well, like I said, I, I'd like to get a, a nice set of bumpers put together at some point anyway. I know. I'm I know. just going to get off my duff and do it. But for now, we'll go right into our five tools. And we'll probably talk about more than five here. Um, but I marked down five. And, and as I'm staring at this list of mine, I sit there and go, Oh, yeah, what about this? Oh, what about this? What about this? But I wanted to put out five tools that can help you to grow your business, especially if you are a video business. Now, this the, the, the other stuff could be future shows, just FYI. Well, they definitely could be. And some of these things probably deserve to have uh, shows dedicated to them by themselves. You know, something like, uh, you know, uh, an entire show on email marketing with with AWeber and GetResponse, you know, that kind of a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, for this one, I wanted to just kind of go through some tools because one, people seem to like the lists. That seems to be a, a popular thing anywhere. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of these things because, you know, uh, and, and Steve, you know this as well as anybody, is even if you're a video marketer, you, you know, you can't live and die just by videos. You still need to have uh, websites and, and uh, things to, for people to buy and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And so uh, I put together some things that I think can help you with video marketing and, of course, with your uh, non-video related portions of that marketing. And so that's what I put together here. And then I've even got an honorable mention that I'm going to throw out there for a completely different reason. But let's get started with the first one on my list here. And this one is not a single product. This is actually, um, can potentially be a couple of different products. And we'll talk one specifically, uh, or actually two specifically, because they, they tend to be ones that uh, work very well, are very easy to use, and, and you can get started with very quickly. And this has to do with building landing pages. And, you know, Steve, you know this as well as anybody. When, you, when you've got a video and you're trying to give away something or you're trying to sell something, we need to have a landing page for them to go to. And uh, I, for one, am not a web designer or a coder or anything like that. I, are you a, a web professional, Steve? Oh, heck no. <laughs> so, fortunately, we have some great tools that can actually help us to build those sales pages and lead pages and opt-in pages and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, so our tip number one is to get one of these products to be able to capture the leads, to be able to sell the product and give away your, your giveaways and things like that. And one of the products that I want to mention first is lead pages. And lead pages is an interesting sort of uh, program because it's it's different than the other ones that we'll mention in this category because it's not hosted on your own website. This is actually a, an off-site service where you go and you choose a template and you very quickly make a lead page. It can be a sales page, it can be an opt-in page, it can be a webinar sign-up page, you know, all those different types of things, but all those one-off type pages versus an entire blog or an entire website. So anything where you're building a one-off page, lead pages can help you do that quickly and easily. In fact, I, I have lead pages and I often use this when I've got, um, you know, a, an interview that I've done with somebody and we don't really need much of a page. We just need a place to display it and maybe a clickable button to learn more, you know, that kind of a thing. So it's great for those. And it's great for single sales pages as well. And have you, have you used lead pages at all, Steve? I have. It's been a while, but yeah, I, I like it. It's, uh, it's, it's got some great advantages. Like I said, the big thing to me is the speed um, because some of the other products that we're going to talk about actually are in some ways more powerful, but 
require extra steps. And when you need a, a good, clean, solid page very quickly, lead pages is the place to turn. And uh, I mean, I know people that build their entire business off of lead pages. They don't, uh, they don't have anything else except that. And uh, it works quite well. It's a, it's a very simple pick the template, add in your video embed code, or uh, you know, if it's not a video page, add in an image, whatever it happens to be, and follow the uh, the on-screen easy to create instructions and hit publish, and you are done. And the other big advantage of lead pages is it keeps track of everything for you. How many people came to your page? How many people clicked through? How many people opted in? How many people went to the thank you page? Uh, all of that kind of stuff right there in the dashboard. And they've got a lot of other neat little tools as well. Uh, for instance, lead boxes, which is instead of having a, a full page, is just a pop-up box through lead pages that you can put on your website on any page and uh, be able to do some opt-ins and things like that. So that's uh, the first one, lead pages. And you can learn more by heading to leadpages.net. Don't do dot .com, dot .net. And uh, lead pages will be able to uh, help you out there. One disadvantage of lead pages, do you know what it is, Steve? Actually, there it's, are two. It's, it's not hosted on your server, or well, that that's actually a positive thing, especially if you got a server that's as slow as mine. Oh, okay. No, but, I, uh, I don't. Well, the the only two negatives are one is the price. Um, it is not inexpensive. Um, you do pay for the low end version. You're going to pay about two hundred dollars a year, and for the higher end version, you're going to pay uh, you know I think it's like three times that for the for the higher end one. But they do have a lot of stuff, and the fact that it's all hosted off-site. Um, and, and by the way, when I say hosted off-site, the, the page is off-site. You can still put it on your own website. But when you do, the great thing is all of the heavy lifting is still done on their servers. So it looks like it's on your server and it runs through your website, but it, they're doing the heavy lifting. So that's, a, that's another advantage of that. But uh, So the two big things are the price. And then the other one is the flexibility. Um, when you pick a template, you kind of have to stick with what they've already got there. So there's not a lot of functionality of, oh, gee, I need to put another text box below the video here. Sorry, the template doesn't have that. You need to just move on. <laughs> so it's, it's very, very template based. Uh, so that would be the only other disadvantage. You kind of have to stick with what uh, they have. For, one, one joke that I've made about it is, uh, you better hope your software only has five features because, uh, you can't <laughs> add any more. <laughs> So and I'm probably going to get an email and go, hey, dummy, of course you can. You just do this, this, and this. But uh, as far as I know, you can do that. If they, if they put down five, uh, five features with little check marks next to them, you're going to do five. I mean, you can, you can delete some. You can do less. But uh, you, know, you can't seem to add more. So you kind of have to stick with their templates. But, of course, there are other products in this product line. And uh, one that you and I are very familiar with and that I absolutely love is InstaBuilder. Oh, yeah. In this case, InstaBuilder 2 which is light years ahead of InstaBuilder 1. Uh, InstaBuilder 2 is very lead pages like so it's very similar to leadpages.net in that uh, they have those templates, in that they have the statistics right inside your own website. Uh, the difference here is you actually do put this on your WordPress site. So literally you will upload a plugin to do this. And it allows you to create sales pages and squeeze pages and giveaway pages and webinar pages, all those same types of things like in lead pages, but you have a lot more flexibility with what you can do. You can add animations into different pieces of it. You can add the text boxes that you want to. You can add more videos, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's a, a little bit more flexible. And of course, the, uh, the fact that it is template based, you can stick with the templates if you want to keep it simple and build something very quickly. And that's of course, not the only one out there. The other one that, that we bring up a lot is Profit Builder. And Profit Builder uh, actually came out before InstaBuilder 2. And uh, Profit Builder actually is a, a brilliant little program that uh, does a very similar type of thing as the uh, InstaBuilder 2. Uh, the only problem with, with Profit Builder is it tends to be slow. So add new things in there. It seems to take a while before it uh, updates for you and it kind of slows you down. 
but uh, still a great product for building these lead type pages. So those are three things you can do to build lead pages, single opt, uh, not single opt-in, but single function pages into your website. And the great thing is, if you've got a really nice theme and a nice blog, it doesn't interfere with that. These aren't themes. These are individual pages that basically ignore your theme and create a, a page by itself that, that runs its own theme, doesn't affect any of the other pages, and just kind of sits there in its own world, which is really a, a great thing. So there you go. Lead pages at leadpages.net, InstaBuilder 2. And uh, we'll give the website for that because I think it's kind of funky. And then uh, Profit Builder is ProfitBuilder.com. And there you go. So that's our first section with the lead pages. Steve, any questions about uh, these types of uh, lead pages? No, no, I'm good. I, I'm, my favorite is InstaBuilder, by the way. And I've got both versions. The old version that I use for just static sales pages, my own sales pages. And then the new version, which is great for affiliate products. Yeah, oh, it's wonderful, and uh, I use it. Uh, I, I use InstaBuilder two pretty much on a daily basis. I would say in, in, in most cases, um, although I've switched to uh, my site now has switched more to a blog style review site, so I don't use it nearly as much as I used to, but I still do use it quite a bit. Okay. Quite a bit. So okay, so let's move on to the next category of products that will improve your business. Now, this one to me is probably the one that I use the most uh, on a daily basis for a variety of things. In fact, as we're doing this program right now, we're using one of these programs. And that is the Adobe CS Suite. And uh, that stands for Creative, well, it's actually Adobe CC now, I guess is what we use, which is Creative Cloud. And uh, this is the full suite of Adobe software Things like Photoshop and Illustrator and After Effects and Adobe Premiere. So all of these different digital products for creating digital content online for a whopping, I believe, what do they charge? Uh, like $20 a month, I think, to use it, which is uh, really good. And, of course, you can get an educational discount if you've got a student in the house and get it even cheaper. But uh, quite frankly, it's a, it's a great deal. And I, and I know some people will probably come back and go, yeah, but by the end of the year, you've paid, you know, $240. Well, the thing is, you know, I mean, After Effects by itself, I think used to be about $900. Yeah, and you get so, you get Photoshop, you get the whole nine yeah, yards, you get right? all yeah. of these things. I think Photoshop at one point was $600 by itself. You get all the updates as they come out, and uh, the only downfall is you're always paying for it. But, um, you know, heck, they're always uploading, updating these things, so uh, you'd be spending more money anyway. So for me, it's a very convenient way to get a lot of uh, great stuff done. And of course, they have everything in this creative cloud. So Photoshop for any type of graphic needs, if you're editing photos, if you're creating banners, any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't have to talk too much about Photoshop, I'm sure. Illustrator for those that like to do vector artwork and, and create things that way. After Effects for doing extremely high-end animation. Um, you know, for those who don't know what After Effects is, because obviously it's it's not uh, you know it's not as well known as as something like uh, like Photoshop is. But After Effects is kind of like Photoshop for video. Mm -hmm. So you can add you know all sorts of graphics, do things to video, manipulate video. I mean, they use After Effects in high-end movies and TV shows. And you can have it on your desktop as well. So it's a very good uh, good little software package to have. Um, and once you kind of get the hang of it, it's not very difficult to use either. So there you go. I used to use it in the TV studio all the time. That's how we did all of our animation back in the day. So Back in Rhode Island? or uh... Uh, That would be back in Rhode Island and, and in Massachusetts, yes. Oh, okay. And of course, with that also, you get Adobe Premiere. And this is the one thing that I can't stress highly enough. Uh, I get, and this is my fault as much as anything, I get questions from people all the time. It's like, well, what, you know, gee, I, I, I shot a video, but I really, I don't know how to edit. You know, if you've got the Adobe CC suite, you've got Adobe Premiere, one of the high, high-end video editors. And I believe, and I could be wrong, I'd have to double check on this, but I, I believe that even the uh, the little brother, Adobe Premiere Elements, I believe, uh, comes with this as well. So you can download either one of them, I believe. I'll have to double check on that. But regardless, you know, if you can get Adobe Premiere, you're talking about 
a very high-end video editing system that can pretty much do anything and you're getting it for you know twenty dollars a month with photoshop and after effects and illustrator and all these other adobe softwares that you may not even have heard of um so honestly you know how can you beat gee i need to i need to really edit this video or or worse uh, the one thing i get all the time is i've got a video i want to add a graphic over it for a button inside of youtube but uh, Windows Movie Maker doesn't seem to be able to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, Adobe Premiere can pretty much do any type of editing that you need. If you need to add graphics to the top of your video, add lower thirds, even do uh, animation, add pictures, things like that. It, it's a very, very high-end editor. And it's not super difficult to learn to use. So it's uh, something that anybody can really get their hands into and, and start to do some amazing things with. Green screening, very high-end green screening. So, fun stuff. Yeah. And what do you use to, to edit with, Steve? I use Vegas. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. And very similar. Vegas is another one that's uh, in that same type of category of, of higher-end uh, video editing systems with things like Final Cut Pro and, uh, and, and um, Avid, things like that. Pinnacle has a few things out there. So, there's a, there's a few options out there. But Adobe Premiere is one of the high-end ones. And if you've got CC... For 20 bucks a month, you've got a high-end editor right there in your pocket. Some of you may even have Adobe CC and had no idea that you could even get Premiere. So uh, there you go. Yeah, good point. That's a, uh, a big thing when it comes to editing. So there you go. That's the Adobe Creative Suite or Creative Cloud, which will help you to do all of these different types of marketing things. And it comes with Dreamweaver as well for those of you that like to do web design. You know, just a ton of different programs that are in there. Yeah. So great stuff. Yeah. Okay, so the next one I want to bring up is one that I also use almost on a daily basis, really, and that is screen capture software. And there's a few of them out there. My two personal favorites are on the PC is Camtasia, and on the Mac is ScreenFlow. And you can also do Camtasia on the Mac, but I, I find ScreenFlow to be a, a better uh, a better version than Camtasia is, at least on the Mac. Uh, the PC one's a little bit more robust. The Mac is a, a cut-down version of Camtasia. I think they, uh, I think they started to make it and then realized they're not gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna oust ScreenFlow on the Mac, and so they kind of just gave up. I think, but uh, <laughs> either one is great on both platforms. But uh, ScreenFlow on the Mac, Camtasia on the PC, and of course these are great for capturing training videos. So if you've got software and you want to show people how to use it, you want to show people how to use your website, you can screen capture your, uh, your, your computer and show people exactly what you're doing. And Steve, do you use, uh, do you use Camtasia? All the time. All the time? Nice. And I do too. Uh, every time you guys see, you know, uh, one of my walkthrough videos where I, I show a piece of software or I show what's in the back end of a, uh, of a product that's come out through their membership site that's all done with screen flow i'm capturing it inside there and of course you can do things like highlight stuff that's in there blur out things you don't want people to see uh zoom in on certain aspects of the uh the software all that kind of fun stuff add titles and and essentially in both cases even though people don't think of them as this both screen flow and camtasia can essentially be a full-blown video editing system. It doesn't just have to be for screen capture. They're actually both very good video editors. So if you don't have Adobe Premiere, if you don't have Final Cut Pro, if you don't have Vegas, you can use Camtasia or ScreenFlow to do those exact same things. And I'll tell you right now, one thing that I use Camtasia for all the time, excuse me, ScreenFlow for all the time is when somebody says to me, hey, I can't figure out how to do this. Mm-hmm. I will very quickly jump in, record a quick video, send it off to them. And not only does it save time, you know, you'd think it would, it would be more time to make a video. But if you think about if I send an email response and then I have to wait for them to respond and they say, oh, I didn't quite understand that. And then I have to try and re-explain it again and send it off and wait. With a video, you're showing them. It's quick. It's easy. And you almost never have to do much follow-up on that. And people go crazy over it. I mean, there, I don't think there's ever been a time where I've done something like that and people haven't gone, holy cow, I can't believe you took the time to make an entire video just for me. Yep. And, and I kind of laugh because it's like, well, it's actually easier than <laughs> trying to type back and forth 50 times, you know. But 
they do. The clients appreciate that, showing exactly what you're doing. And this is great for people doing services. So for instance, if you're working with a local plumber and you've created a YouTube channel for them, you can then create a, a ScreenFlow video, go through and show them exactly what you did, why you did it, explain it, show it. Uh, or inversely, if you're trying to get them as a client, show them what's wrong. So you can literally go through their website or their YouTube channel and say, see this here and highlight you know, this. You need to fill this out better. It should say this, you know, all that kind of great stuff. And people love it. Like I said, they, they're always very impressed that people take the time to do that. And of course, if you're a product creator, I create all of my products in ScreenFlow. So if I'm training on YouTube, I create my trainings in uh, there. Yeah. If I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation or, or a keynote presentation, I use, I use these to record it and talk over it. So there's just so many things that you can do if you use a screen recording system. And again, the two that I recommend, ScreenFlow for the Mac, Camtasia for the PC. And uh, for those of you that don't have a lot of money to spend right away, there's also some free options out there. Jing is, a, is actually made by the same people that make Camtasia. And it's a... Uh, it's meant to be more of an annotation type deal where you're just recording a quick message for somebody, but it's a, it, it is a pretty much a full-fledged screen capture system where you can do the exact same things in there. And another one is Cam Studio. Cam Studio is a free Camtasia-like product where you can uh, do screen capture and some little editing as well. So there you go. But uh, yeah, ScreenFlow, Camtasia, screen capture, very, very big part of my business and something that has, I mean, really, it, 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 without that screen capture, I probably wouldn't even have a business at all. I, I use Jing a lot as opposed to replying to emails. I'll, I'll just cut yeah. a quick, uh, quick Jing, Jing video, upload it to Screencast and send it to them. Oh, absolutely. It's fantastic for that. And, and they, you, it'll actually, uh, the, the Jing video that you capture will actually be saved right there on the cloud. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to send it to them or host it anywhere or anything. It's or you just send them a link afterwards. Yeah. So there's a lot of great reasons to use Jing, especially for correspondence and things of that nature. Great for guys like me who can't type. There you go. Yeah. Or don't want to. Yeah. I, I, don't I agree. Want to. I find it a lot, uh, a lot easier. Now, the next one that I want to mention, and again, this I know this is a, a bit of an eclectic list here. Oh, I guess it's not too eclectic yet, but it's going to get a little more eclectic here because now we're going to get out of the creating web pages, doing artwork, and creating videos space, and I'm going to head into communications a little bit. And one of the biggest things that has really made a huge difference in my business over the last year and a half and this is a product that before that I never used at all. And now it's on 24 hours a day and is used throughout every single day. And that's Skype. Mm -hmm. Skype is an amazing piece of communication software, mm -hmm. which is saying a lot because Microsoft owns it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dutch gotta don't my, have it anymore. They sold it. I get my digs into Microsoft there. But no, fortunately, Microsoft has, has not laid hands on Skype too much. They've... Uh, they, they own it, and they've kind of laid off a little bit. They did make some updates. Some people didn't like those updates, but uh, overall, still a brilliant piece of software. If you think about this, the fact that you can do phone calls with anybody in the world at any time, do video phone calls, send files back and forth, um, capture the video of you talking to somebody, capture the audio, run a podcast, and by the way, even the high-level podcasts all based off Skype. So when they're interviewing, you know, the president of the United States, it's through Skype. All that kind of stuff done right through Skype. So uh, very, very robust piece of software. And it seems like it's very simple. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just send messages back and forth. But there are so many things you can do with it. From Like I said, from sharing files to recording podcasts to talking to anybody over the world to doing video casts and everything else. Uh, a great, great piece of software. If you're not on Skype, I highly recommend you get on it. I avoided it, and uh, now it's probably the one of only a few things that are on all the time. And speaking of communications and Skype, the other one that I love to play with is Facebook. Um, and I know Facebook is a time waster. Believe me, I know it's a time waster because there are times when I sit there and go, holy cow, I've got nothing done because I'm goofing on Facebook. Yeah. 
But the the reality is that the uh, ability to create message boards, I guess I guess you'd call them groups, not message boards, but the ability to create groups, the ability to create fan pages, the ability to do instant messaging back and forth has been a huge part of my business. So much so that I tell people all the time, don't even attempt to email me because email is a nightmare and it's going to get lost and then you're going to be mad at me for not answering because I didn't even see it. If you send me a message on Facebook, chances are I'm going to answer you within minutes, uh, sometimes even seconds. Except me. Except except Steve, who I ignore. Yeah. But I do get your messages, though, most of the time. You just ignore them. That's right. <laughs> no, I was, hey, if if I'm available, if I'm available, it is the most instant way for me to get back to you. Yeah, even more so than than a you know a phone call, phone or a text call text. or email or anything. It's about the only way to to communicate with you. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. And and the best thing about it is that it pops up on the phone. You yeah. know, when somebody calls me on the phone and I see a random number, I don't know what it is. I, I'm not going to answer it because it could be just some guy trying to. You know, sell me solar power or whatever. Um, but somebody sends me a message. It says exactly who they are, and it says the message right there. And if it's important, I can jump. You know, I can pretty much within seconds send something back. Uh, you know, as long as I'm not in the middle of something else. And so I, I love using that. It's a great way to do business, and I highly recommend if you're only playing around with Facebook, start using it for this. Our Facebook groups are. I mean, it, it's brilliance. They have done so much for helping each other, for learning, for sharing videos, for building views. I mean, there's just so much that goes on in the Facebook group. So I highly recommend you get into Facebook. If you only use it to see what uh, people are posting about Bernie Sanders this week, and you're, you're wasting your time. But if you're using it for all these other things, it can be a great tool. So I highly recommend that. And, of course, the final one is Twitter, which I am awful at. But I feel I have to mention it because I know far too many people who run their entire businesses off of Twitter. Uh, and, and that includes big businesses. You know, when presidents of companies are like, you know, uh, John Smith, at John Smith on Twitter, you know it's a big deal. And you can contact a ton of people on Twitter, get their attention, provide them information. It's, it is a great tool and I'm getting more and more into it. In fact, Steve, here's something shocking. I started using um, a piece of software that helps to automate putting out our articles and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the five tips of YouTube or whatever it happens to be, I have found far more engagement through Twitter and they're much smaller numbers than I have on Facebook. Yeah, and, and, and I've noticed that with Twitter, if there's somebody you want to get to know, you, you, you want to meet them, you want to uh, uh, start a relationship with them, business-wise, uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about stalking, um, Twitter works very well, and they'll respond, and they won't respond to anything else. They won't return emails, they won't return phone calls. Oh, absolutely. They're, they may not be on Facebook, or they just don't want to do business on Facebook. But if you reach out to them, if, if you send them, um, it's not the direct message, it's the at message, you know, at. Uh, which, which all of that stuff still kind of confuses me a bit. <laughs> well, there, there, there is a way to send them a direct message, and they get an email about it. Right, right. But you can send them a public message just by putting the at symbol in, sure. front, of their, uh, in front of their username. And amazingly enough, most times they'll respond. Oh, yeah. And and what I've found, too, is like if I post, you know, like one of the articles that, that we post on uh, the Video Marketing Madness Facebook page, if I post that to Facebook, some of the other groups or my, my public wall, and I post it to Twitter, Twitter gets about three times as many clicks. Mm. So it's it's I was shocked to see this because I'm not a huge uh, uh, Twitter user. So that means that while Facebook, the general public has the potential of seeing my stuff and a huge, much, much larger audience, only the only people that are going to see my Twitter stuff usually when I post it are, are, you know, people connected to me or people searching for that particular subject. And yet I get three times as many clicks in most cases. Yeah, yeah I believe it. Very impressive stuff. So that is communications using Skype 
and Twitter and Facebook. And let's not forget, you know, for those of you in a more business oriented environment, uh, uh, LinkedIn is another great one too. Same type of thing as, as using Twitter. Uh, kind, of a, kind of a combination of, of Twitter and Facebook, really, if you kind of think about that. But um, much more business related. And uh, I've, I actually connected with uh, an old friend of mine who's a vice president of the NBA uh, through LinkedIn and oh. was able to get him a meeting or able to get a friend of mine a meeting with the vice president of the NBA for a uh, thing about sports. So uh, definitely quite usable. National Basketball Association? Yes. Very NBA. cool. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, I used to work with a guy who uh, he's, he, he was a, a vice president of the NFL. Then he came to work for, for my company, and then now he works for the NBA. So, Very cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. So there you go. There are the f- – oh, I'm sorry. That's only four. <laughs> email marketing. We got to get into email marketing. I actually left a, a blank there because I have a special one, but I thought we were at the blank. But no, email marketing. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that I do a lot of email marketing and I tell people all the time, no matter what business you are in, you are in the business of list building. And email marketing is obviously, uh, I kind of use, you know, interchangeably with list building. But uh, obviously, list building in general could be collecting names and phone numbers. But uh, in, in most cases, for the people listening, it's going to be email list building. And a program like AWeber or GetResponse or even MailChimp is going to uh, go a long way to helping you to build your business. And the reason for that is most people that you run across are not ready to buy a product yet. And they might be starting to research. They might be starting to learn. But if you can capture their lead, then when they're finally ready, you can, send, you know, you can be sending them out messages, prepping them, taking them down that buying spectrum – and then once they reach the point where they're ready to buy, they're going to buy from you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just a normal principle. If you're somebody who does what I do and, and does affiliate products, you know, I gather leads all the time of past customers, of people that download free products, free uh, advice, you know, free eBooks, things like that. And then we send them out reviews of other products. And if they like that product, then they uh, then they'll purchase it. And it uh, works quite well. But you need to have a great program to be able to do that because you can't just use your, you know, your, your normal inbox and, and send an email out to 3,000 people. It doesn't quite work that way. So you need a product like AWeber or SendReach or GetResponse or MailChimp to be able to do that. And uh, the one that I use is AWeber. The, uh, the, at the top of the show, we talked about AWeber. But it's a, it is. It's an easy way to be able to use something like Lead Pages or InstaBuilder to capture your leads and then be able to email out to them. So I highly recommend that no matter what business you're in, even if you're, you know, you're not doing an internet business, if you're a, uh, a plumber or a chiropractor, you got to do your list building. Even if it's just in a book, grabbing people's names and phone numbers when they come in and ask a question. It's, it's something you've got to do so that you can recontact with those people because, as we've mentioned before, there's only a couple of ways to make money or make more money than you're currently making. It's to either sell more frequently to your current customers. It's to sell more at the time that they order, you know, higher price tag. And the final one is to get new people. And it's a lot easier to take people that you've already got on a list and tell them about a new product than it is to try and chase people down to tell them about a new product. So I uh, highly recommend that you get one of those programs. Uh, MailChimp will let you start for free. However, they are very, very strict. And uh, you do anything they don't like, they will shut you down and they won't give you the list back. And so you will have wasted your time. And uh, not only that, but uh, after you reach past the free point, they are quite expensive. Uh, Aweber is actually less expensive, and I believe uh, I believe SendReach is uh, it's a newer one, and I believe it is just a one-time fee for people that jump in at this point in time still, um, and you can have that forever without having to pay monthly fees. On top of that, with Aweber you will pay a monthly fee, but you can get started for only a dollar to see how it works. Um, quite frankly, if you spend that dollar and put all the work into building your 
your, your autoresponders and, and your capture things, you're not going to want to get rid of it at the end of those 30 days. So just be aware, you're going to put in some work once you buy one of these programs, but it will be well worth it. Uh, highly recommend that you get one of these programs to be able to capture leads. And Steve, do you capture leads? I do. I use AWeber. I've, I've tried AWeber and, and MailChimp. I found AWeber was just a heck of a lot easier, you know, and a heck of a lot more intuitive. It was a lot easier to use. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and Mail, you know, not, not that MailChimp is bad, but I do think that AWeber is more robust, um, whereas MailChimp is, MailChimp might be a little more, I, I don't know, fun to use is the right word. Um, but but I'm going to use it anyway. It's it's a more fun little product to use. They they have you know you have fun while you're in there. They do little monkey sayings and you know all this other things. But at the end of the day, Aweber is a much more robust system. Uh, even though they do have their quirks and and sometimes I want to strangle them, they uh, they are a great system overall. So I highly recommend you check out them out and uh, check them all out. SendReach, Aweber, MailChimp, GetResponse, iContact, Constant Contact. So there's a whole bunch of them out there. You can check them out. Uh, for the internet marketing area, Aweber and GetResponse and SendReach seem to be the uh, most popular choices for that particular type of market. Whereas iContact and Constant Contact, those tend to be a little more for the local businesses, um, you know, places where you're capturing phone numbers and things like that. Uh, and that's just my observation as far as that goes. Somebody will probably yell at me for saying that. Yeah, Constant Contact does not have the best autoresponder interface. I've tried it. it uh, I, I wasn't impressed. Yeah, and, and Eye Contact I've used, which actually is pretty good. But uh, okay. those tend to be for more traditional businesses rather than online businesses. But any of them are a great thing to check out and uh, choose the one that seems to fit best for you. I always recommend Aweber, and I believe they have about 70% of the market, believe it or not. And uh, so, yeah, they are they are the leader in that particular market. And today's show made possible by uh, Aweber. What's your link for that? It's raythevideoguide.com slash Aweber. And by the way, we will put together a document with all of the links for all of these products so you can learn more about them, and we will keep them in the show notes so you don't have to try and guess where they're at right now or try to write down the URLs as I speak. You can look at the show notes and be able to download those. So there you go. That's right. It's the radio show about video, Video Marketing Madness with Ray the Video Guy. I'm Steve Sleeper. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash video marketing madness. Get plenty of useful tips and news of the week. Be sure to like a few stories so they show up in your news feed. And if you go to video marketing madness radio.com, there's a link where you can subscribe to us on iTunes and leave a review and get all kinds of freebies from Ray. That's right. We love freebies. Freebies are always a good thing. So check that out. And of course, we will uh, instantly add you to an AWeber list as well. That's right. <laughs> Just to be totally clear out there. Yeah. Always, as, as my friend Andrew says, marketing, everything is marketing and marketing is everything. That's right. Nothing happens until you sell something. That's right. Okay, buddy, let's wrap it up with the jingle. Let's do it. We'll see you all next week, same time, same channel. Adios. Have a good one. He's Ray the Video Guy. Yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at. Even if he's a little fat, he's filled with video expertise. Has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray.